Mark eleven twenty two. And Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Now, I've had people try to turn that around, have the faith of God, have faith of God. Bottom line, it comes down to you have to have faith in God. Not in your faith, but in God himself. Amen? In his word. He says in verse 23, For verily I say unto you, Jesus is saying, that whosoever shall say, not think, right, but say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall, there's that word shall, that's a promise, shall come to pass. Now do you realize your faith is activated at the point of shall? You get that? Why? Because that's a promise, and that's what you activate your faith on, the fact that it shall be done. You get that? And you say, I have it now, and it shall be done. You get that? I receive it now, as done, and it shall be. That's what he's saying here. But first, you have to receive it as done now. In other words, yes, it's done, and I shall have it. All right? You've already made the call. You've ordered the thing. You've given, you know, you've given your, your card number, and they said, okay, we'll put it in the mail on Monday. You go, guess what I just bought? I just got this, and Monday I shall have it. See, we ordered some equipment last week. We ordered it, we paid for it, it's ours, and it's en route to us even now. Isn't that right? It's supposed to be here tomorrow. You know what that means? That means we have it. Amen? We have it, and we shall have it. Right? We're already talking about how to use it. And we're, we're I, I've been watching on the YouTube. There's training videos. I've been watching, and I'm like, this is a neat thing. It's going to be a, it's going to be fun. You know, I'm like, I need somebody else to preach because I want to go work this machine. Yeah. Almost, not quite, almost. But it's going to be fun, right? And because that, but now it's ours. It, it's got our name on it. It's, it's, it's already left the manufacturer, right? So it's in route, right? Now think back, Daniel. Daniel prayed 21 days. The angel shows up and says, Daniel, God heard your prayers and I was sent. Your prayer was answered, what? The day you prayed. It's just taken me this long to get here, right? Now, was it done as far as God's concerned? Yeah. Yep. But it still had to be brought through into the now. Amen? And that's what you have to realize. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. As far as God's concerned, that's a promise. It's done. I lay hands on the sick. It's you know, ratified in heaven. It's on its way. Now you just go, guess what? I got my healing. Well, you don't look healed. Doesn't matter what it look like. What counts is, I got the answer. What counts is, it's as good as done. Why? And guess what? Because I believe it, I shall have it. Right? And they say, well, I don't believe that stuff. Well, it's good that you, it's not you that's sick then. Right? You hide and watch and watch me. I'll get well. Right? Why? Because I shall have it. And do you see that? I'm, I'm just telling you what basic faith is. This is how it works. Now, he says here, Be thou removed, be thou cast into sin, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. Notice it doesn't say shall not doubt in his head. Do you realize you can have doubts in your head and still not be doubting in your heart? You can have people telling you why it won't work or how you're not going to how it's not going to happen, everything else. And until you take that thought by saying and agreeing with them, guess what? Your heart's still believing, and no matter what your head's saying, you just decide to believe God. You say, I, I, I can understand why you'd say that. I could I could actually agree with why you would say it would be impossible. But I believe. And that's why it should be. Right? And when it gets here, we'll know it wasn't your faith that got it. Amen? You get that? But shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall. Look at this. One, two, three, four, five times it says in this verse, shall. Now, if shall is the strongest word in the English language and he used it five times in one verse, how sure do you think that promise is? Now, think about that. Now, what that should tell you is, I got to get to saying Amen? I got to get to believing and I got to get to saying some things because I believe that what I say will come to pass. Amen? Amen? Therefore, Jesus said, therefore why? Because whatever you say will come to pass, right? Because of that, I say unto you. Notice it was Jesus, right? Not just anybody. Jesus said, what things soever you desire. Now notice, look how big that is. What things soever you desire. Whatever it is. Think about that. That's just a blank check. 
from God. Whatever you desire, whatever it is you desire. When you pray, not later, not when you see it. When you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Now, right there, God is not telling you to lie. He's telling you how to operate in faith. Do you get that? He says, when, when you pray, what thing, what thing soever you desire, when you pray, not when you see them, when you pray. Anybody can believe when they see. That's what the world does. You're not of the world. You've got to believe before you see. That's what makes you different than the world. You got that? When you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Now notice, he recognized right here that when you believe it that you receive them, that you're not going to have them right then, that you're not going to see them, but you shall have them. Right? So he's not telling you to lie. He's telling you how to operate in faith. John 14, 12 again, we read it. Verily, verily, I say unto you, not just anybody, but Jesus. He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall. There's one. He do also, and greater works than these shall he do. Why? Because I go to the Father. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do. And see, we have a problem with that because it's so open-ended. But if Jesus had made every promise specific, the Bible would be so thick we wouldn't even be able to carry it around. Right? True great faith is being able to take a general promise and apply it to a specific situation. And the more general the promise that you can apply to a specific situation, the greater faith you're operating in. Right? You want to know how to grow in faith? Start using more general promises than the specific. I know whenever I, the group I was in, we had to have a verse for everything. You know, what verse are you standing on? And it'd be specific. Well, that doesn't cover that. Well, it, I mean, it had to be specific. And it was bondage. And I'm telling you, greatest faith is taking a general statement. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. That's pretty much as general as you can get. Right? And I stand on that and I apply that general promise to individual people that stand in front of me. And because of that, guess what? They recover. Amen? Amen? That will I do. Not I might do it, maybe you know, if it's my will. No, that will I do. Why? Now he's going to tell you why he's going to do it. Whatever you ask, here's why he does it. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. Right? So it's not, about, not so that he can do something just for you, but it's so that the Son will glorify the Father. Now, he says in verse 14, if you, now notice, if you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. You realize he says this in about three verses here over and over and over. He says, you can do anything, anything you ask, I will do it. The son's going to be glorified or the father's going to be glorified because of the son doing them. Over and over again, he says it. If you will get a hold of this, I will tell you right now, your days of unanswered prayer are over. I'm going to